Asheville is nestled within the Blue Ridge Mountains in western North Carolina and is a cultural city full of local art, food, and music. Named one of America's greatest music cities by Thrillist, Asheville, North Carolina is a huge epicenter for local musicians and artists. The music scene here has a history that reaches way back to when Irish and Scottish settlers brought their traditional tunes here. The culture is deeply rooted in traditional mountain music, but is now turned into a diverse range of genres that can suit nearly anyone's interests. Asheville has a plethora of local venues and music festivals that go on all year long, and we also have a large population of buskers. A busker is basically a street musician. In other words, even if you're not at a concert, you can still hear some talented artists playing when you walk the streets of downtown. My name is Madeline, and I grew up in a rural township called Luster, about 15 minutes from the Asheville city limits. Despite this, I have always considered Asheville my home. I didn't become too involved in the local music scene until I started high school. It was there that I met friends who dreamt of being in a band, were learning to play instruments, or would invite me to local concerts. I then realized what a special culture we have here and began to fall in love with it. While I was in high school, I became close friends with two guys who were looking to form a band, Jude Corbin and Tyler Cummings. Jude wanted to be a singer and guitarist, and Tyler would be the bassist. They just couldn't find a drummer that met their needs. One day, I told them I had found someone they may be interested in, who was really good with drums. I met Zach Tomkowski through being close friends with his older brothers, Chase and Ace. I told him that there was a band looking for a drummer and they wanted to hear him play. Tyler and Jude thought he was great, and thus, the band Tides was born. It was kind of cool to be somewhat involved in this process, and from then on, I was a full Tide supporter. Tides, now named Jabe, has been an outfit for almost three years, and they have grown as a band while time has flown by. Jabe performed their first show in 2015 in Tyler's backyard. Here is some footage that I took from that night. Since then, Jabe has gone on to perform at many local venues such as the Grog, the Auditorium, and even Black Bear Coffee in Hendersonville. Jude Corbin is not only in Jabe, but he also does solo work. I spoke with him separately about what it's like being a solo artist who is in a band too. My family is 100% supportive. Um, I have been told several times by both my parents that it's important to have a plan B, of course. But I, I don't know. I I do agree, you know, if if it doesn't work out, don't, you know, just sit and do nothing, but I think if you just keep trying and keep putting everything towards it, eventually it'll have to pay off. And it might not be that, you know, that you're the biggest star in the world, just, you know, paying off can be you make records at home or you play live shows in your local town, and that can be, you know, the most rewarding thing of all time. Uh, okay, so I've always been drawn to moodier and more um, relaxing music, and um, but uh, you know as well as uh, as well as heavier stuff. Like it is fun to you know just have a fun time and just rock out and forget about everything. Um, so I, I like to try to make a balance between that. My solo stuff is a lot more f centered on the 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 former. It's just. Um, me at my like most pure emotional uh, and you know honest um, and then kind of the the Jabe stuff is kind of just like you know it's more about having fun I'm still honest and emotional but it's more like um, like we're just gonna have fun we're just three guys playing music and you know taking our minds off of everything and all the shit and it's it's just it's just great it's awesome and um, I guess it's more like indie rock and then some emo stuff too. So, um, so like I said, I got my first guitar when I was six, but um, I started really picking it up around seven or eight, like I was saying. And then um, 
after guitar, I dedicated all my time to that. After guitar, um, bass came easy. Um, drums was a different thing. So um, I like pretty much me and my uh, drummer Zach from Jabe, um, we both learned how to play drums from the game Rock Band, kind of, because that helps you develop like more of like a sense of rhythm, and um, it's a really it's a really interesting thing. But that kind of just transferred over, and then. Um, I guess years of doing just covers and stuff taught me more to how to record and then it all came together and I've just been playing ever since. I, I had chorus, which is a completely different thing from being in a loud rock band, but it, it does still have that, you know, getting up in front of people and performing aspect. And I was, um, you know, I've been in a couple musicals and stuff. <laughs> it's a totally different thing, but it does have that, still have that same stage presence. It took, it took a really long time for me to start composing my own music, actually, um, because I, I wouldn't, I, I, you know, there were like little goofy songs I made when I was like nine and 10, but when I started seriously composing my own music, it was, I was about 13 and um, I'd met Blake and my, my friend Blake who um, started uh, Jabe with me as Tides and um, we you know made music together and then we were like what are we gonna call this and we just called it Tides <laughs> and then it's kind of went that far like Tides was kind of the beginning of the me writing my own music at all yeah uh, well growing up in Nashville it, it, I wasn't out in the city much but still it was good to be like if I was out in the city there would be music on every corner, and I'd still I'd be surrounded by that a lot. Um, and I did think that I just I do think that that helps. Um, but um, you know, as far as growing up in the city, I don't feel like it's affected me a ton until recently, actually, because recently um, I've been meeting a lot of more bands in the city and more bands that are more in our genre and um, getting to know some of these bands and getting to meet the guys in them and it's, it's been awesome playing shows with them and then it's like I didn't even know that there was really like a scene of the type of music that I play in Asheville for, for that but it's uh, really cool and that is influencing uh, me as a musician just being around all these other awesome bands from the area um, like um, Pictures of Vernon and uh, Cusco and Tongues of Fire um, there's tons of tons to name um, Star from Turtles. There's tons of great bands in the city, so I've been honored to play with a lot of those bands. I, you know, a a couple months ago, I probably would have said that I didn't like the scene here, or maybe not a couple months ago, um, like six or seven months ago. I, I said I, I probably would have said I didn't like the scene here all that much. Um, but like I was saying, there's a lot of cool bands that I'm just you know getting to know. Um, so I, you know, it's not, it's not the best scene in the world or the best, you know, city in the world for this kind of, this kind of music I'm playing, but it, it, I'm, you know, really happy to see all those bands and I'm really, I really love Asheville and it's um, a great city to be in. Uh, so I guess the short answer is probably no, I probably, um, and just would just rather stay here and um, it's a really good city. My ex-girlfriend told me that the biggest influence that she heard that was just like the most obvious one was American football. Um, and that, I guess I can see that. They, they like totally changed how I even heard music. It was, a, it was a really big thing for me getting into that band. And then there's um, Owen. I love Owen who's a solo project of American football. I love, honestly, I love a lot of the bands around here. Um, like I was saying, Pictures of Vernon and uh, Cusco's from Charlotte, but they're uh, a really great band. Um, and obviously, the Beatles and the Pixies. Um, tons of tons of bands, so many to name that have just influenced and shaped what my music has become. I guess, I, 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 not necessarily a double life, but it is two completely different outlets. Like, the band is, is noisy and loud, and it's good for stress relief, gets the emotions out, 
get the more like the angry emotions out and it's really nice and I feel like you know I'm on stage with my brothers and I'm we're making music together um, and the solo thing is kind of just like the most introspective part of me the part of me and the part of a lot of people that like people don't like to talk about because um, it's ugly it's sad but you know I think it's important to at least it's important for me as a outlet to get that out and um, you know be personal and let my guard down so you know it's different from the band where I'm loud and heavy and less personal and then the solo stuff's more like uh, introspective and pensive and just more down to earth I guess um, so we rehearse in a garage in Canton, North Carolina, which is um, where I was raised. And my dad still lives there. So we drive out and we use his garage. And um, it's a great little spot because it's like just far enough from everything that we never get any noise complaints. And then um, close enough to things that it's like we could walk to a restaurant and get some food or something. Um, and plus it's free, so that's the best thing. <laughs> so I produce all the stuff in the same garage. Um, and uh, we just we just all meet up and record all our parts. And there's a bunch of microphones and recording equipment. Um, we've been to a studio. It's a really expensive ordeal for you know three high school kids who don't make that much money. Um, so I figured it'd be better to just invest in a ton of recording equipment, record whenever I want, and record for as long as I want. Um, so, and, you know, it might not sound as great as a, um, as a, as a multi-million dollar studio set up, you know, that's like, you pay to record, but, um, I'm really trying to embrace the home recording thing. I think it's a really important thing. Um, you know, not that I don't like studios, but. I think home recording is the best way to just get everything out right away and it's a, it's a, it feels like it's part of the creative process for me in its own. Um, so yeah, I think that's, I think it's important for uh, home recording to, you know, be more of a common thing. A uh, musician full career, uh, without a doubt, 100%. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I do like the idea of it being like a side gig, like a hobby type of thing, and that might be what it has to be if I, you know, have to get a, a real job, <laughs> but, um, you know, if it's what I can do in my life, 100%. Jabe was the first band I was personally connected to, and through this connection, I have met a plethora of local musicians or people who are involved in the music scene in other ways. This year, I met a friend of mine named Audrey Keelan. Audrey is an Asheville-based photographer who works mostly with bands and musicians in Asheville. She also dabbles in journalism that is also about music. Audrey and I met in the darkroom at AB Tech, and we had a chat about her personal experiences in Asheville's music scene. My name is Audrey Keelan, and I am a music photographer and managing editor of Melton Magazine, which is an online music publication. I've been into photography since I was nine years old. I'm 16 now, so um, it's been it's been a hobby for quite some time. I started um, making money off of photography in middle school, just taking portraits of people, um, and then I got into the music scene. Um, about a year ago, um, with, with Melted, um, I had always taken photos of my friends who were musicians for fun, but I got really interested in the music scene a year ago with Melted, um, just photographing every show I could, um, going to as many events as possible, um, interviewing bands, pho uh, photographing bands, you know, doing some photo shoots of them and everything. I began Melted, um, with a friend of mine and her friends in 2013. It used to be a an art magazine um, and at that time we were accepting all forms of art you know music digital photography film photography um, of all kinds but we eventually um, made it a rule just to only have film photography and at that time I wasn't shooting film so I sort of like got out of it for a while but then um, I got back into it um, 2016 2015 
around then, and I started just writing, um, taking some photos here and there, and then really intensely got into it about a year ago. So as the managing editor, uh, as a managing editor right now, um, my friend Al is the editor-in-chief of Melted, and um, as the managing editor, it's pretty much I just do everything that an editor would do, um, but for people who live in the Asheville area, um, as well as, you know, surrounding North Carolina. Um, so that means that I give assignments to people, um, I edit their works, uh, I publish stuff on the website, I manage the social media, uh, or the Instagram account, um, I take care of some of the tapes with Melted, um, do some artists and repertoire stuff, which is like finding artists that we can use for our tape label, and, um, yeah, I just overall do a lot of stuff to try and keep Melted together. <laughs> I am involved in Melted magazine for a number of reasons. Uh, I think the first, the biggest one is it helps me exercise my love for um, photography as well as writing and art um, and um, music, of course. I'm very passionate about music and I think everyone should be very passionate about music. It's given me a lot of great experiences. Um, one of them would definitely be just being able to um, interact with other people, no, like anyone else, honestly. Um, I've learned how to uh, have discussions with people who have um, similar interests to me. They may not have other similar interests to me, but I've learned to connect with people about music. Um, and I've learned a lot about music through being in Melted. Like, it, just my knowledge about music has exponentially increased um, after working for Melted, and I think that's just my overall goal as a person, just to be very, like, well-learned, or well-learned and knowledgeable by the time I die, so I just want to know as much as I can, and I think that Melted has been a really great, um, a really great source for that. My main goal is to just be photographer overall, um, I would love to go touring with bands, um, my, yeah, just my main goal is to be a, uh, music photographer, um, and make money off of that, and but definitely I'm in love with writing. I love just helping out with Melted in any way I can. So if I can start making money off of that, that would be really cool. Um, I want to keep it going for decades, you know? Like, I don't want it to just end after I leave high school, you know what I mean? I, I want it to be, um, I want it to be there forever. <laughs> I've been told that I'm very supportive when it comes to the Asheville music scene, which I really appreciate. Um, and I think, I think I've definitely, you know, made my rounds, but it hasn't been that long, you know. I think that I could definitely be more involved, but overall, just being in Asheville, which is such a haven for, for art, has really helped me grow as a person, and I think it's helped other people for, you know, if I take photos of, of an artist that no one knows about, and then I put them on Melted, then people will know about them. You know, maybe a few people, but still some people will know about them. Um, so I think I've helped just publicize people. Um, I really, I, my main, I don't know, I, just, I have so many goals with Melted, but one of the big ones is just, just to support the local music scene. And that's like our mantra at Melted, you know, like, we want to keep it strong, because music has always been, you know, a strong part of everyone's life, but we want to, you know, help musicians become as strong as they can be. My first um, band that I interviewed face-to-face -face was a band called Slugly, which now I've become very great friends with them. I've like, um, we're working on some tapes for them at Melted now. Like we've, I, you know, I've been pretty supportive of them and like, but anyway, the, the first time that I interviewed them or that I met them was on an interview um, that I arranged myself. And I think it was a great starting off point because these kids were in high school at the time and I went to the same high school as two of them did. Well, one of them was out of high school, but anyway. So it wasn't very intimidating because they were my age, and um, yeah, but it, it sort of slowly increased since then. But what I mean by it being a roller coaster is it starts off being so intimidating and scary, and then once you get like once you get on a roll, sort of of, of interviewing bands, meeting bands, going out and just socializing in the music scene, it's sort of like normal to you. But then if you don't do it as much, it goes down, you know. It's and then you know it gets really really intimidating. So sometimes I look back on like emails that I've had with like bands I'm like wow I'm really cool I can't believe that I did that you know it'd be hard for me to do now but then other times I'm like wow I should really you know reach out more or you know other times I may say I'm on a roll you know that's really cool um so yeah it's kind of a roller coaster but um in terms of like being a young person it's definitely 
pretty intimidating. I think if you just don't think about it, then it's, it's great. You know, if you just think of how people as people, um, that's a really great message that I also get from the music scene. It's just like, it doesn't really matter who you are. You can still enjoy a great time. You know, you can still enjoy music. Um, this is from April of 2017. And this is when I went to um, Alabama with Ian Ridenhauer, who is this guy right here. Um, we were playing, or his band was playing at um, a music festival called Panoply Music Festival in Huntsville, Alabama. And this photo was taken in his grandparents' house we were staying at. Um, and the band was rehearsing. So I decided, you know, why not just take some photos? And I really like this, just because it's so comfortable, I think. Um, you're, you, know, you can see that they're in a house. Okay. So this photo sort of draws parallels to this photo of um, Ian with his drummer. It's taken in the same house. Um, but yeah, it's just Ian practicing a song and his drummer's right next to him, has some coffee, you know, no shoes on, just hanging out on this couch. Um, yeah, I really enjoy this photo because it's just, it's very, it's so comfortable and I feel like you don't see enough photos of like musicians in their element um, <clears throat> rather than sort of entity, enti uh, I don't know, like rather than portrayed as like a god or a deity on stage. Um, so, I don't know, I think it's just important to portray musicians as humans, too. Because um, sometimes there's a lot of pressure on put on them to be a certain way. So, yeah. Here's Ian and his drummer in the house. Here's Ian and his other singer in the house. And then another photo that I really like is this one that I took of um, the keyboardist of a band called Tides uh, at the auditorium. She's packing up an amp. Um, yeah, I just like it. Because, you know, it's another one of those musicians in their element, like, behind the scenes, what, you know, you don't see usually um, when you're at a show. Um, so, yeah, she's just packing up a, an amp. And I kind of, I love just, like, the curves in this picture. And I love that it's in black and white. I think, I feel like if it was in color, it would be completely different. So, yeah, and speaking of color, um, I take a lot of photos on color, too. So this is, like, just, just the half of it, I guess. I, very, um, you know proficient, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I take a lot of photos. Um, but yeah, this next photo is of Father John Misty at the Diana Wortham Theater. There's a lot of things that I like about this photo. Um, I think the first one is that his hand is pointed up, you know, like sort of instructing someone to do something. And I think that sort of, you know, um, symbolizes his music in, in general because it's very um, critis critical um, on society. It's a lot of him telling um, the listeners what's wrong with society. It's, it's almost like pretentious, but it's okay, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I like it because of that. And I also like the lights in the background. Um, the third thing that I really love is when I developed this, I put, I didn't put enough fixer in to the tank, so it has these weird, like, um, clouds around it, which I think is kind of, like, ominous. Um, which is another sort of theme, I think, of Father Don Missy's music. It's like, it's just very like creepy, sad, um, really, um, what's that word? Something that I really like about that is just, it looks sort of ominous, um, scary even, and it, it makes me think of like visceral, um, it gives sort of a visceral effect, and that's what Father John, Father John Misty's music is about, um, criticizing society and giving sort of a visceral effect, um, about society, so, yeah. The next one is actually from the same band, Tides, uh, that I was showing you before. The reason that I like this photo is because it's pretty intense. There's drool dripping out of this guy's mouth that I caught in midair. Can you see it? And I think, you know, definitely capturing, like, the intensity of musicians and um, the place that they want to be seen as is important for them. But it's also important to capture the, you know, the cute times, the, the I'm a human times, you know what I mean? So that was that. Um, this photo I just took. Um, this is Angel Olsen at the Moth Light in Asheville, and it's a pretty simple photo, but I really like it because um, she, this is from a show that, it wasn't her show, um, although she's pretty famous, it was a show of her friends, um, Jay Bartell, who is a wonderful musician, and so it just conjures up these like great memories for me, like it makes me feel really good when I look at these photos, um, and again, don't know what happened with this roll, but there's some little clouds here and there, um, which I think is kind of weird. Uh, it gives sort of a weird effect because um, the message says, oh, be merciful and be kind. So, you know, you'd think it would look very happy, but it's got some weird clouds here and there. So, But um, another thing that I like about it is um, how I captured it. Um, 
because this was a moment where she just held up this sign. I wanted to get it quickly, so I just pointed my camera and shot it. And, you know, I didn't think it was going to be focused, but it was. Another photo that I really like is this one of my friend Colin. He is uh, from SubFi um, Records in Asheville, and he's also in a band called Bruce Mott, and he has his own little thing called Holler, which is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, he's a really great musician, and I like this photo because it was actually, it, it looks completely different from what it, I intended it to look like, but it, you know, made all the difference. So, I really love this because um, his hands and the hand shirt he's wearing just make this beautiful shape together, or, you know, these beautiful, like, sort of a, um, uh, a triangle of shapes. I don't know. It, it, it looks kind of cool to me. Um... And his expression is just so weird. Um, so what he had intended with posing this way is we were making this big joke about um, managers in the music industry and how they're always just like so annoying and very like um, bougie, I guess. So he was um, imitating managers. He got these sunglasses. He was like, yeah, I'm really cool. Um, no, but yeah, it was really funny. And it was intended to be funny, but it just looks good. I think it just looks... Um, it's it just, yeah, it's a nice composition, um, the shadows are so weird too, it's just this weird, like, conglomeration of things and somehow it looked good. These three, these three are just, they're just photos of, um, the environment, so this, um, this is a guy from a recording studio in Asheville, he's also in three, three bands, I think, two? Yeah, he's in three bands, and, um, this is a guy from Bruce Mont, um, and they're, they're playing Tetris, which I think is nice, you know, it's, it's something different than um, being on stage. And then this is sort of an off off moment. Um, and then this is just a, you know, an environment photo of the music scene. Audrey and I became friends mostly because of our love of music. She also inducted me into the world of Melted, and I occasionally write for their magazine. A few months ago, Audrey took me along to an interview she was doing with William Henson, another Asheville musician. William started out as a solo artist, but now he performs with a band. In contrast from most of the musicians I spoke with, he makes pop music. He has released three EPs and has another on the way. He was born in Winston-Salem, but moved to Asheville for school. We met at the Lipinski Hall studio, and I asked him a few questions. Um, so my name is William Henson. Uh, I'm a singer-songwriter and um, a producer. Um, I make pop music. Um, I play guitar and piano um, and bass. Um, I play the chords, I sing. Um, but I think if you play piano, you play like a billion instruments because you can play them in software you know if you can play piano you can play it anything um, <laughs> there there's a lot of different things that go into uh, any sort of um, any f sort of decision in your life or you know there's a chain of events that lead up to you being whoever you are um, and so there are a lot of things that play whenever I started playing music um, my uncle was a songwriter in Nashville for a long time, and so from a very young age he was always very much coaching me to be a musician, and he like bought me you know, instruments and stuff like that. Um, then I have two older sisters. My older sister is seven years older than me, and so obviously every person that she ever was in contact with, I thought that they were like the coolest person ever. And so she dated some boy in the high school. Um, I was in the third grade, second grade, third grade. And he was in a band and he played instruments and I just thought he was the coolest thing ever. And so it was really a combination of those things. I um, started, I'd like come home from school and this was before YouTube. This was before Google bought YouTube and it was just like Google videos. I don't know if you remember that, but it's a major throwback, and um, and I'd come home, and they, at that point they still had like the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, and they had you know all these like old Beatles performances and stuff, and um, and I would watch that, and I'd watch like videos of John Mayer, and um, 
I was just, you know, I, I was so captivated with the idea of like they were up on the stage and it was it was a presentation, it was performance, you know, and I was like, I want to do that, you know. So I guess third grade. I started writing songs in the sixth grade. Um, ben Folds is also a huge inspiration because uh, he's from Winston. He was born and raised in Winston, so I connect with him on a lot of that stuff. Um, and it's also like when you see someone that's made it, you know, whatever, from your same sort of circumstances, you know. Um, I also think that it's incredible to to hear songs where he puts like, you know, he he has one like the Haynes Mall parking lot. There's there's a lyric where it says the Haynes Mall parking lot, and that's the the mall back home. And um, but yeah, so I'd say probably Ed Sheeran as well, um, Hollow Notes and Stevie Wonder. Um, yeah, pretty much make a good pop song then I was probably inspired by you at some point um, I just don't really have any other choices I could do other things you know they're all, you know everybody's oh you know my, my mom specifically my mom's like, oh William you could be a great lawyer you know you can talk your way into anything and, you know that sort of thing. but that's just not like I wouldn't be happy doing those things you know I wouldn't be um, I wouldn't be fulfilled I think it took like tangible, like a tangible, like, okay, this is what we're doing. I'm working with this person and we've got this person taking photos and, you know, it's, um, in the past year, my dad has started to take it, well, both my parents really, um, have started to take it really seriously, um, in terms of like it being a business and it, cause it's tangible, you know, before it was like, you know, you can be a musician, but like, you know. You're gonna go to school. You're gonna be an intelligent. Try to be an intelligent person. You know that my uncle, my mom's brother, was a songwriter. You know, they saw firsthand like what being a musician meant and like that that mentality. And so I think that they were very they're very trepidatious to have me want to pursue this as a full time thing. But um, I think that. More, more recently that, you know, my dad talks to me about, you know, what can we do to further the brand and all of that stuff, which I think is hilarious. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very supportive and, and we have, um, we have a, a band and, and um, right, let me start over. Don't, don't use that. It's all over, uh, this blanket of elevator music. That's, um, my series of EPs and, um, it's all, um, there are five songs on each of the EPs. Uh, we've released uh, up to volume two. We've, or I guess up to volume three. We haven't released volume three yet. Um, and so ten songs technically in the canon, whatever you want to call it. Um, I play a lot of shows. I, I played a lot of shows, and shows is a very relative term, um, uh, by myself before getting the band together. Um, We've played three shows as the band at this point uh, on, what day is today? 26th, okay, 26th of November, write it down. Um, yeah, we've played three shows together. Uh, one of those was at Cat's Cradle, which is um, it's in Carboro, and it's a historical venue, I suppose. Um, we played there in September. It's weird being in a band where uh, your, your name is what's on the poster, but you have a band with you, you know? Um, but but the everyone that plays in the band is is very much not only supportive of of the goal, obviously, um, but very much um, I think enticed by the opportunity to play pop music and and to play um, I don't know how to phrase this. We're all very concerned with with the future, I think, and uh, everyone, period. Um, but I think uh, this collection of musicians, uh, I feel very honored to play with them because they're incredible musicians, um, and they want to play my music. So in the band, we have five different. Uh, five, there's five of us. Um, I sing and play guitar, and um, and then Nick O'Leary plays piano. Um, he's just one of the most incredible piano players I've ever, I've ever seen. Like you're like, wow. This, it's not just in like YouTube videos or you know you read about it in books or something that's that's how Nick plays he's just a virtuoso it's it's remarkable Dylan Jordan plays bass 
Dylan Jordan graduated from this program at Music Technology, which I'm in. Um, he works at Moog now, at Moog Music. Uh, he builds synthesizers. And then um, Will Jans plays drums. Um, uh, Dylan's a great bass player. Uh, he is, he's, I think he's more concerned with the engineering side of things. He's, he's very technologically oriented, obviously. He works at Moog, so they're um, both jazz performance. And so Will is the busiest drummer in Asheville. He's in like every band that there is in Asheville. Um, he's a part of so many projects and um, so the, the fact that he chooses to, to play with me is, is very humbling. Um, incredible drummer. Um, and then Claire Hoke, who is one of my best friends, uh, I mean all of them are my best friends. She sings uh, back up and she operates like all the Ableton stuff and like different um, uh, samples and you know trigger triggers and all that stuff. She um, she does I would say special effects is that but yeah and then she sings. She has one of the best voices I've ever definitely way better than mine and definitely uh, w when we record and I record her voice it's like. I don't understand how that comes out of someone, you know. I think Asheville, it just depends on what you play. But you've got all these tourists coming, and um, and you know, they're they're antsy to to see live music, and uh, and so I think that the demand for music in Asheville is is understandable. Um, but the music scene, to be a band, uh, to 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 be an artist in Asheville is is really. Um, incredible experience because um, you're not necessarily subjected, at least I'm not, I'm not really subjected to people that are exactly like me. Um, and I don't think that anyone else in Nashville would say that. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of indie bands and stuff. and um, But I don't, that, that's, that's what I would say about the Asheville music scene is I've gotten a lot from it because I think it's a very blanket and pretentious and douchey statement to say that I'm the only person to play pop music in Asheville, because I'm not. But for the the majority of people, like they're not like trying to make top forty hits. You know, it's it's very much like alternative or rock bands or funk bands or jazz bands or you know whatever. And so it's a very it was a very interesting experience for me. Um, to come here because I've learned just so much from from all these different types of music, and that's what I think that's what being a musician is all about. Nowadays, there are just too many quote genres. So now people feel uh, they feel very strongly that they're going to be the spokesperson for um, indie electronic art fuzz noise metal, and like. That's my genre. That's what we play. Uh, but I think that it's a niche thing of like, you know, if I, if I am this one genre, if I'm this very specific thing, then that's who that's who I am, or that's who we are, you know. And we are the best of that thing. I think that there, there's merit to that, but I I think um, I can't really categorize what my music is, and so therefore that's what you know, pop is. Pop is just popular music popular music is subjective you learn from from the people that are making you know art fuzz death metal you know like and and you incorporate those things into your music I don't look at it as a, um, a hindrance uh, it's more of like a, it's exciting uh, it's exciting and it's also exciting to work with musicians like um, like will and Nick in my band like they're both jazz performance majors like and they're incredible jazz performance majors so you know we're over here playing you know, pop music or whatever, and and then in rehearsal or you know live, we can bust out you know all these like augmentation. If you're making music for yourself, then what are you doing? If and if you're making music specifically for your demographic, then you're not going to be successful in the ultimate scheme of things. Like I'd much rather be accessible. You know, uh, with pop music, you're accessible because you define it as pop music, but still people don't understand. Like people. You know, oh well, there's this influence, and oh, I hear this influence in there, or you know, whatever, and and so therefore it becomes more accessible. You know, do I prefer playing solo or playing with a band? Playing with a band, absolutely. Being a solo artist, I was never like surrounded by people that were in, like that wanted to be in a band. 
uh, growing up, it was all the people that wanted to be in a band were in a band together. I just thought that I was going to be a solo artist, and that's how it's always been. Um, and um, and so I played all of these like solo shows or whatever, and I thought that it was going to be such a burden for me to ask um, people, oh, you know, will you play my music with me? And that was just such a stupid fear because I realized after I started playing with the band that the I was actually burdening the audience by being this white guy up there on stage with an acoustic guitar. I was actually burdening the audience to like, hey, sit here and take it. And you can't, you, you're not going to dance to it. You know, you're not going to, you know. And so I had to work even harder and, and I was actually just burdening the audience. Whereas like with the band, it's, it's much more of a participatory process. I want people to come to the show and leave with like, wow, that was an experience. The band is until we achieve what we're striving to achieve, um, yes, the, this band, this collection of musicians are um, much like my family. I'm just very thankful that I get to get the opportunity to play with them, and as long as they'll play with me, I, yeah, I'll, I'll be playing with them. Yeah, volume three, we're working on it right now. I don't deserve to have like a like a cool name for a cool cool record and make cool a cool record with with my best friends and, and great musicians. you know, I don't deserve any of those things, um, but I'm, I'm very blessed to, to be able to do that. So we're working on it right now. It'll hopefully be out um, in early 2018 sometime. With volume one, I just had a collection of songs that I wanted to put on a record, and I thought that they were good, and um, I thought that they sort of embodied the principle of elevator music, you know. And um, But they weren't... They're not as synonymous as like with Volume 2. With, with Volume 2, it was very much from the get-go. I knew that it was about uh, you and me. It was about a a, a relationship um, start to finish. You know, you, I like you, and, and you like me. And that, that EP is, is very much a, a story. I, I like telling stories, <clears throat> as you can tell. Volume 3, it's... Um, it's very much about me. Yeah. Um, that's all I'll say. I'll tell you, volume one is about you. It's about you. Know, you. I want you, and you. Know, you, you, you. And it's it's me telling you, or whoever you, know, telling people a lot of things. Volume two is about you and me. It's about two people, and. Um, and then so volume three is, is about me. It's uh, a lot of songs are, uh, I mean, all of the songs are very much things I've struggled with or, you know, I'd like to get better at. Talking with these wonderful people has made me a bit more knowledgeable on the Asheville music scene. And I have an idea of what it's like for their everyday experiences here. If you live here in Asheville, I highly encourage you to explore what we have here for yourself. Support your local bands and artists. There are many great ones out there. Mm -hmm.